In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Amen. Uh, today, the third Sunday of the month of Baba, and we just heard actually a story all of us familiar with it. Matter of fact, it's the only story that mentioned in the four gospel. Our Lord God Jesus Christ had a great multitude follow him. And after the multitude follow him, he started actually teaching them about the kingdom of God. And after he started teaching them, he had compassion on the multitude. He said, you know what? And he asked the disciples, it's amazing, the Savior asking us to feed others. They said to them, you know, give them something to eat. They said, we don't have enough. But actually, we have about five loaves of bread and two fishes. And then, as you know the story, our Lord Jesus Christ took the five loaves of bread and two fishes. He broke and prayed and gave it to the disciple to give it to the others. And after he said them in, in orders, and as you know the story, that 5,000 people ate and there's actually left over. I was actually debating today to talk about leftover, because I've been reading an article about really the leftover. How the leftover can feed the whole world right now. Each one of us, if you go to your closet, you will find a lot of leftover clothes, leftover food, even leftover money. In this article, they said, I think he said, basically, there's enough leftover in the whole world right now to feed the whole world for everyone to live a larger life. Enough left over. We have a lot in the bank, there's a lot of left over. But today, actually, I want to focus with you actually because this prayer or this, uh, this miracle mentioned in the four gospel, and all the fathers, the early father actually spoke about this miracle about how our Lord God's first Christ, this miracle revealed to us the divine nature of Christ. And I want to speak a little bit about the divine nature of Christ, but before I do that, there's a great book I will advise you, especially young men. You understand, it's very difficult. How, what's the divine nature of Christ? There's a great book by Bob Shenouda, actually, it's called The Divine, The Divinity of Christ. Great book. This miracle actually mentioned in the four Gospels. And the reason, it's one of the only miracles mentioned in the four Gospels to emphasize the who our Lord God Jesus Christ is. We believe that one of the most beautiful title or name we give it to our Lord God Jesus Christ that uh, really we call him the incarnate God. What do I mean by the incarnate God? The incarnate God means the one who was born of St. Mary, that he's actually a full man and a full God. He's God, but also sometimes he can see him as a man. He can, he can see him as hung, hungry. But another time he see his divine nature, his power. If I believe that the one who came to earth and born from the Virgin Mary, is actually the incarnate God. He actually had a, a full div divine nature and a full human nature. And those two nature combined to one nature, to one person, the incarnate God, our Lord God, Jesus Christ. That's why sometimes even Satan was so confused about Jesus himself. We believe that the one who was born of the Virgin is actually the one who was existing before all ages. Even one time, actually, I was debating this last week with one of the youth. That's what inspired me to speak about this today. He said, Abuna, but there's no really verse in the Bible. There's no actually verse our Lord God Jesus Christ said directly, I'm God. He did not say directly. But I told them actually there's so many stories. One of them actually, you will find it in Matthew chapter 5, 8, in John chapter 8, verse uh, 56. Our Lord God Jesus Christ was talking to the Jew and the, and the, the, the Pharisees and said to them, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not even fifty years old, and have you and have you seen Abraham? Our Lord God Jesus Christ responded, said, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was I am. I'm not going to get to the word I am because that's the name of our Lord God Jesus Christ before. And what happened actually? They took, and then they took his, up stones to throw and, at him. But Jesus himself went and actually away from them. For therefore, actually, they took a stone. Why they took a stone? Because actually, at this moment, he's claiming himself, he's God. 
And that's our faith. The one who came down to earth, walked like us, ate like us, become like us as a human. He's a incarnate God, took flesh from the St. Mary, but he was existing before all ages. And many beautiful references in the Bible actually talk about, when you read this book here, you will discover that how our Lord God Jesus Christ had two nature, the human nature and the divine nature, but he's God. And that's why in the end of the sermon, we see that his divine nature did, did not depart from his human nature for a single moment on a twinkle of an eye. And this is actually a lot of debate about this. I wanted to read this. For number one, actually, our Lord God Jesus Christ, he's God, he's the one. He can perform today in today's gospel, he actually creates something from nothing. He's a creator. He's existing before all the, all the ages. He's a creator. He can create. He took the five loaves of bread and two fishes, and he made enough bread and enough fishes to feed 5,000 people. Not only that, there's left over. And we see the divine, I'm going to talk about four important aspects to, to us, the divine nature of our Lord God, Jesus Christ. Number one, we'll see our Lord God, Jesus Christ, let me call him the incarnate God. That Saint Athanasius the Great uses beautiful verse. The incarnate God, the God that exists before all ages, finally revealed himself to us. Finally, he appeared to us. After the Lord God spoke to in, many, to, to, in many different ways in the Old Testament, then God appeared to us. That's why Saint Paul tells Saint Timothy, it's a, a, it's a great mystery that manifests himself in the flesh. And also in John chapter 1, he said, hey, the word became God and dwelled among us. The word which is God himself, the Logos. For number one, we see his divine nature over, his power over nature. You know, we have a lot of sometimes right now, especially this coming month, you will see about a lot of storm, a lot of hurricane, a lot of things will happen. But you know what? You will see one thing. Nobody will have overpower over them. Our Lord God, Savior Jesus Christ, had power over nature. One time, actually, he was talking to the, to the people. This is in uh, John, uh, this, this is actually in Mark chapter 4, verse 9. He said, Then Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the, the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. His power over nature. We never heard. Even when you study the history, when you go back to the history of first century, second century, especially in the first century, all, most of the historian people talk about Jesus that no one had power like him. He is something else. But sadly enough, some of the historian cannot say this, he's God. But he's the incarnate God. He has power, number one, over nature. He can tell the wind is still and will become. Second, actually, we see his power over sickness. Right now, there's so much sickness and so much technology. Look at the technology that we have. Can you imagine, yani one day I was talking to my mother, can you imagine a piece of steel has some uh, uh, numbers on it? You can call somebody in Egypt to speak to them. That's what it is. It's a cell phone. Wireless. You can speak to anybody. Last few days, last week actually, we heard about the, the, the owner or the, of... Uh, uh, Amazon, actually, John, that he, how he went to the moon and came down. So it's so much technology, but yet, yet they did not have any power over a sickness. I remember Steve Jobs when he was sick with cancer, and he had a lot of money, but in the end, money did nothing to him. Sickness, but our Lord God Jesus Christ had so much power over sickness, and so many stories in the Bible actually see especially with the story of the paralytic man. And until now, actually, one of the tough sickness to find, uh, to find healing for it is strokes. Tough sickness. But our Lord Jesus Christ took this paralytic man and healed him. Not only he healed him because he's God, he actually forgave his sin. So his power over nature, number two, his power over what? Sickness. Turn me men only. Number three, actually, his power over death. Can you imagine somebody did? Yeah, and we just had a funeral last week uh, with a, a young man, 29 years old. Just can you imagine uh, Jesus walking into the church and said, young man, stand up and walk. And he will take the young man, give it to his parents. Wow, all of us will probably will be all over the news. We'll go crazy. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ had power over, a, over death. And you know the story about Lazarus. He, even he was sick and buried for four days. And Martha and Miriam had no hope. They told him, if you were here, my brother wouldn't die. And the Lord God, he said to them, I am the, the life, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will never die. So we see also his power over nature, his power over, his divine power over nature, his divine power over sickness, his divine power over death, and the most important thing actually is divine power over it changing us. By the way, the most beautiful power of Jesus is that how he can change me. How can give you a new life? You look at a man like Moses and Saint Moses, how he was actually a killer, living a, a, a life far away from God. Once he met the Lord the God, he changed completely. Look at Jacob. He was a crooked man. Jacob was just a crooked man. He cheated his brother. He was just a hard a man. But after he had a very beautiful dialogue with the Lord, when the Lord God appeared to him, and he even wouldn't let him go, he changed and become Jacob in a great man, the father of all the fathers. We heard the story about many St. Augustine. Even every day in our life right now, we see how people can change. It's not just something happening, but it's happening every day. The miracle that will happen in my life, not he can heal my sickness, not he can raise somebody from the dead right now, but how the Lord can change me to become a new person. That's why in first, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, he said, if anyone, if anyone in Christ is a new person, once you discover Christ, and you know that he's the incarnate God, I'm going to repeat this, he's not just, he's the incarnate God, that the one who is actually full divine and full human, he is my Lord, he's my Savior. I look at him on the cross on Good Friday, crucified, but he's the, he's the most powerful person, that he can change me. He can change me. We know the story about actually St. Peter the ascetic, how he had no love for the poor, and how the Lord God changed him to the point that he sold himself as a slave, and he took the money that he sold himself and gave it to the poor and needy. The Lord God can change each one of us. I will share with you a beautiful verse actually from the book of Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. He said, I will give you a new heart. The Lord God is saying that. I will give you a new heart. This is my power, in the, my divine power in you that it change you. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. Just I will take the heart of that stone heart. And he said, continue. He said, I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. All of us sometimes we have a heart of stone, a heart that cannot move. The only one can change that heart is one person only. It's my Lord and my God and my Savior, Jesus Christ. The one who came down to earth like us, the man who walked like us, the incarnate God, the one who has so much power, had so much power over nature, so much power over sickness, power over death. Not only that, power over changing me, to give me new life, to give me new life. If you go actually to St. Moses or St. Augustine, he will tell you, you know what? And that's what he said actually in the book, The Confession of St. Augustine. He said, I have been looking for you all my life, and finally I find you in me. Now, once you are in me, you can change me. You can grant me a new life. I would love to repeat this verse again. I will give you a new heart. Who can give you that? The Lord God himself. And put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone. The heart of that sometimes is very stone. The heart of stone, a rigid heart, a heart that cannot love others. I will change your heart. And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. You know the difference? Stone cannot feel. If you touch the stone, it has no feeling. But the flesh has feeling. Faith can give you a heart that to feel others and to know others. Today, the beautiful miracle of our Lord God, Jesus Christ, that he actually changed, added today in the miracle, he actually created something from nothing. Father, he can create something with, from nothing with me. We see the divine power, the divine nature of our Lord God, Jesus Christ, how he really was able to do that. To take the five loaves of bread and two fishes and make it to feed 5,000 people. And the most important, next time when we have this gospel here, I promise you I will talk about the leftover.
But that's a big topic, by the way. Lift over, especially for this side here. If you go to see your closets, at Laha Maliana leftovers. I always say that why are you buying so many clothes lately with shoes and then a lot of leftover. But the most important thing today, remember that the power followed, guys, guys, guys. Number one, his power over sickness, his power over nature, his power over sickness, his power over death, and the most important thing, his power over me to change me, to give me a new heart, a new life, and glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.